Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing, where this time we're going to take you down to the new forest where there's a lake, and I'm going to try and catch you some carp with the difference. Carp on a fly rod, we hope. And down here at Lake Farm, if I can get them feeding right on the surface, you won't just get to see them on the surface, you're going to get to hear them as well. In fact, I don't think I've even brought enough bait with me. I'm here down at the lakeside it's perfect it is perfect for fly fishing for carp flat calm blazing sunshine I've already thrown some uh, surface attractants out trying to bring them up on the top now you can either cast for these carp individually you know you can just cast you can just fly fish with a single fly and you probably might catch one but you will catch one with with proper flies like these if you can chum them first and then drop a fly to it you're going to have a big, big chance of scoring. So they're the sort of flies that uh, you can use. All different dry flies. You want ones on the surface. They won't generally take them down deep, but one I'm going to try. Well, two flies I'm going to try. One is the mayfly. It's a partridge pattern mayfly called a French partridge, but it's quite fluffy and it should sit up on the water quite well. That should sit up there on the surface and you put a bit of floatant on it, keep it on the surface where the carp can see it. And the other one, which is... You call it a fly, but it's not really a fly. It is the hedgehog fly. Right, so that is basically an imitation of the chum attractant, the chum dog mix of biscuits that we're going to use. Now, what the fly fisher does, Sid Knight ties these up specially for me, he ties this body up with deer hair, then he clips it back to look like a little hedgehog, which gives it the rough texture of the chum mixer. He can cut it to the exact size of a chum mixer biscuit when it's expanded with water, which is how you fish them on the top so they're nice and squishy. And then he bleaches it white, okay, he bleaches the fly, all the dressing white, and then he tones it down to the colours that match the biscuit. So you can have green biscuits, you can have uh, red biscuits, you can have blue biscuits, it makes no difference what biscuit you're using. You can match it by using these. Okay, well that's the flies taken care of. Now here's the fly rod. This is a two piece, 10 feet long, and it says rated six to seven. Six to seven being the actual weight of the fly line you cast out. There's no leads, there's no floats, there's nothing on here. With a fly rod, you're just working the weight of the line, swishing it backwards and forwards like this until you can cast the fly out. Now this is called a direct drive reel. No drag in the middle of it, you have to hold the end of the spool here, just the edge of the spool if you get a fish pouring line out. So this can wrap your knuckles if we get one hooked up that's halfway decent. Floating line this is, you want it on the surface, a carp on the surface, and I'm going to have nine feet of five pound line, not tapered, just straight onto the end of the fly line. Grease a little bit of it just here, the last foot or so. So I'm going to bait up with some mixers, get the carp confident feeding on the surface, and I assure you, I am going to catch one. Tell you what you want to get these carp on a fly rod this is what you call sport absolutely fantastic look 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 come on come on it's not a big fish but they dig down so deep what you've got to be careful of with a fly rod is that you don't do this hopefully my rod won't break you don't pull back this way too hard put a high arc into the rod and snap it 
but be very careful fighting carp with a fly rod. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, he's not a big fish, but it's the first one on the first cast. A babby. There we go, just a small fish. But that's a start, there's plenty more in there. And I think I could be in trouble. When they empty this uh, lake of small fish, like this, the middle sized ones have gone from this to six pounds plus, and I've seen some eights swimming about. So I'll get this one back, see if we can't get a bigger one. Sometimes you get these fish feeding, they come in so close, right under your feet. Oh, he comes, he comes, he comes. Right on cue, right on cue. Ah, oh, that's a beauty. Now watch these reels because, as you can see just there, they direct drive, one turn of the handle and one back. If the fish pulls away like this, as it goes that way, you can wrap your knuckles. Ooh, another one bites the dust. Come on. I might be able to lift this one out. Oh, Things I don't want to lose that hedgehog fly. It's almost an exact match of the biscuits I'm chumming them up with. Come on. Let's lose him. That's it. He's gone. I'd pay, I personally make all my flies um, pinch them down barbless. It just saves a lot of hassle trying to get the hooks out. And if it's a barbless fishery anyway, you need to do that. So make sure with your flies you just crush the barbs with a pair of pliers. Two in what three cars? That's, oh, that's not bad, is it? It's not bad. I want a bigger one though. Come on, come on, come on. Come in, number three. Your time is up. Now, you'll notice I'm stripping this. It's because this took the fly a long way out, then a lot further off, off from the bank. So when I come tight to the fish, I can then take up the loose stuff. I wouldn't be able to wind fast enough just on the reel because as I say it's direct drag, one turn and that's all you're going to get. Now I'm back on the reel. I'm always oh, a bit better fish this one. It is a bit better fish. It's even worth kneeling down in this soaking dew grass. Everything, come on, come on. Why do I leave the net somewhere else? No, come on. That's a better fish. That's a better fish. It's not a bad fly with fish either. Well, that's three fish I've had on the hedgehog fly. Yeah, look at that kitty, that's a nice one. Three on the hedgehog fly. I think I'm going to change flies and try that French mayfly, the partridge dressing on that. And that sits absolutely on a fly on its own right. It's a proper fly. A hedgehog fly is a copy of a floating mixer. That's the truth of it. It's not really a fly at all, it's an imitation. I'll get this chappy back. Look at that for a lovely mark, little common. Beautiful, an orange tail I always find, I always find that's a really good uh, sign of a healthy fish. I'll get this one back and uh, let's just see if we can get one, a traditional dry fly. Right, I've come down the other side of a bed of rushes here and the fish here, I've got them chummed up. Now this is another thing, if you chum too much, there's a fish moving there right now, if you chum too much you get the real small ones, you know like pound, pound and a half, that sort of size. It's the bigger fish you're looking for, which I'm looking for, so I'm going to try and put just one or two biscuits just down here and I'm going to try and drop this mayfly fly, as you can see. I'm going to drop that one on the surface. There we go, fish on, fish on, fish on. Straight away on that mayfly. Those rushes, you monkey. Ah, come on. You don't see this on other fishing programs. You don't get them hooked up like this, this fast, this quick, because we're using the right method, the right way, and it's working. And that's on a traditional dry fly. Look at the bend in that fly rod. Come on. That's a good fish, and there's just loads out there cruising. It's just a question of trying to find that extra big one. 
as usual, the net's missing. Right, here we go again. Come on. See if we can get him in, get him in. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. This is how they battle, they're really. Oh, Mr. Got it. There we go. On the traditional trout fly. Beautiful. Sport or what? That is totally awesome. Right, do you know what? I'm not one to become blase about catching fish, but I've done it. I've caught the fish on a fly rod for you. Two different types of flies. This is a six to seven weight. Now I'm going to go stupidly light. I'm going to try and get one of these carp on a three to four weight, which is like a toothpick. It is a buggy whip trout rod for half pound trout. I'm going to see if I can crack out, say, a four or five pounder on it. Wish me luck. Right, then we really are getting in the silly season now. Serious fishing. Seven foot XT carbon rod. It's tiny. It's it, it's rated on the fly line scale. Four, four, not five, six, seven, four. And a tiny, tiny Wickham's reel. You can just see that one there. I don't know, two and a half, three inches, four inches. Well, it's three inches diameter, I think that is. Floating line though, still got to be a floating line. And a little tip is, because it's such a small diameter reel when you want to cast, you can see all these sort of clock spring bits of line that come off. So if you strip all this off of where you think you're going to cast, not the whole reel, and just gently, gently stretch it like this, you'll take out the memory of those coils. You generally only get it with a smaller reel. It happens with big reels as well, but it's more accentuated on a small reel. So look, if you just stretch all this, don't snap it, don't snap it, just a little bit of... Now look how limp that's gone. That is beautiful limp. And that'll cast better as well. There we go. On the four weight, nice little fly rod carp. Good bit of action. I still want a bigger one though. Okay guys, I'm gonna try and catch you one really close in. They're just cruising around in here and I've just gotta get that fly to drop on their head. Oh, I missed a big one, I missed a really big one then. Jeez, how did I do that? about a five pounder. I'm going to dry the fly, put a bit more grease on it, you know, a little bit of floatant trying to get it set right up tight on the surface. Oh, that's a better fish. Come on. Oh, I missed him again. That's two in a row. Oh, no. So close now, I can hardly cast. There's one. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. He's on. He's on. Look at that. Come on, come on, come on, come on, yes, another one, there he is, let's hope he doesn't splash all over the lens, but it's another fine carp, on a four weight, a dry fly, and a huge piece of twig. Yeah.